Thank you for joining me at this Open Word Bible study, the study that takes us inside and behind the original languages the Bible was written in, so that we can take the gleanings from this study, bring it into our reading in our English Bibles, and understand even more the words that we are reading. Today, the word that we're going to study together is wilderness. And by wilderness, I mean exactly what we see in this picture, barrenness. Geographically, there is a great amount of the Bible's content that takes place in the wilderness. And it's my hope that today we will see how much God uses even the wilderness for his great purposes. So we're going to begin uh, reading Exodus 19, verse 1, it tells us there, In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. I chose to read this in the New King James Version rather than the NIV, what I typically read from, because the word wilderness in the NIV is translated as desert. And that's not actually a bad translation uh, of the Hebrew word, but I like wilderness. And because wilderness is the word we're studying, I think it's important for us to see it in the text that we're reading. So let's take a, a look behind the scenes, behind the English of the word wilderness to see what the Hebrew word is. Here it is from right to left, midbar, just as transliterated at the bottom. It means wilderness, a, a barren place, uncultivated land. But there's another use of this word, uh, one that's used less, but it's this right here. The midbar can also mean instrument of speech, like a mouth speaking. And at first glance, that seems odd. How do you go from wilderness to, to instrument of speech? However, when we look at the construct of this Hebrew word, we begin to see how that could actually connect. So by moving the mem over here and really the root of the word right there, uh, the portion that I've highlighted, that word may look familiar to some of you, especially if I say it, Zabar. This is a word that we studied recently together, and it means word. So we can begin to see how because of the root of midbar, the bar meaning word, it can connect to this idea of being an instrument of speech. In several locational titles of the Bible, the mem, this guy right here, is used as a prefix to mean place of. And so let me just think of an example. One would be Mikadosh. That's a, a location in the Bible and it's using the mem at the beginning, and then kadosh. Kadosh means holy, so it's a place of holiness. So if we take that same concept and we apply it here, what we have with midbar is place of the word. And today we're going to see how the wilderness truly is the place of the word, the place of God's word. This certainly fits the context of what the Israelites were experiencing while they were in the wilderness of Sinai. If we were to continue reading where we started uh, from earlier today in Exodus 19, we would find that the Lord is, is actually uh, sharing with his people, the Israelites, preparing them for the time that he's going to come and meet with them, just a few days from that point. And it's on the third day that the Lord comes and he gives his word to them, what we know as the Ten Commandments. And we can read about that in the very next chapter. Exodus chapter 20 shares the Ten Commandments. All of this took place at Mount Sinai in the Sinai wilderness. And it's interesting because this is, this is the place that God chose to speak his word to his people, to Israel. It's our tendency, even today, to think of the wilderness as, as a place where we don't want to be. It's a place that we want to avoid. We, we still use the word wilderness, even metaphorically in our life, to describe a, a time 
or a season of our life that is, is a struggle. There's a difficulty. There's maybe some emptiness along with it. And yet, through the word study of wilderness and the scripture where that word wilderness is used throughout the Bible, there is this constant revealing of God's great purpose, the way in which he even uses the wilderness, that it is a place, again, that the Lord chooses to speak his word, possibly because it's a place of, of less distraction, or, or at least a different kind of distraction. It's a place where our attention is better fixed on him. It's better fixed on the Lord. Our, our realization of how dependent we are on him becomes so much more in the wilderness, whether that's metaphoric or, or other. It was in the wilderness that the Lord spoke to his people, the Israelites, and, and to Moses. It was in the wilderness that the Lord spoke to Hagar, Abraham's concubine, and her son Ishmael. After they had been kicked out of Abraham's tent, they went into the wilderness, and there the Lord spoke to them and provided for them. It was in the wilderness that Jacob, son of Isaac, was on a journey between his house and his uncle Laban's house. He lays down for the night, lays his head on a stone, goes to sleep, and there the Lord spoke to Jacob, a location that later became known as Bethel, or in Hebrew, Baal, uh, house of God. It was in the wilderness that King David would often go, fleeing for his very life, hiding in the caves and the crevices in the fortresses out in the wilderness. And we know the Lord spoke to King David there. We're even given some of the words that the Lord spoke as we read through the book of Psalms. Many of those Psalms written by David as he was in those caves and crevices out in the wilderness. It was in the wilderness that the prophet Elijah ran to after having victory over the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Asherah. He ran for his life because of Queen Jezebel. And where he ended up? Right here. Mount Horeb, as it says. But uh, a.k.a. Mount Sinai, the very place where Moses and the Israelites were when the Lord spoke his words, when he spoke the Ten Commandments to them. And on and on goes the list of God speaking his word in the wilderness to his people, the wilderness, the place of the word. I want to take just a moment more to go into the New Testament now, to look at one more example. And interestingly enough, this example is of Jesus himself in the wilderness. And so we'll begin with Matthew 4, verse 1. It tells us, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, the fact that it's by Holy Spirit leading Jesus there, we know that when Jesus ended up in the wilderness, it wasn't by accident. He wasn't traveling on his way to somewhere and broke down and was stuck in the wilderness. That was his destination, the wilderness. And we continue to hear about this as the passage continues to tell us about Jesus in verses 2 through 4. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus had been spending undivided time with God the Father, with God Holy Spirit there in the wilderness. He fasted for those 40 days and 40 nights. And so, of course, naturally, at the end of those days and nights, he's hungry. And the tempter, Satan, uses that as his opportunity to come in and to tempt Jesus. And he says, hey, if you are the Son of God, which Jesus is, then you can turn those stones into bread, which Jesus could. But he didn't, because that was not his purpose. His purpose being there in the wilderness was to show his true dependency on the very word of God, the Son of God. 
God, the living word, was showing dependency on the word of God. And this is why Jesus quoted from the Bible, from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. This is what I have highlighted right there at the bottom of our reading in, in Matthew 4, 4. Let me read it to you again. Jesus' response, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I love this. Jesus is in the wilderness, and he's speaking of the very word of God about the word of God to the tempter, Satan. And just to heighten this a little bit more, something incredible is that Moses, the one who wrote the words we read in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, what Jesus was quoting, he would have been writing those words just a little ways east of where Jesus was, both in the wilderness. Moses was in the wilderness when the word of God came for him to write those words. And then years later, Jesus, just a little ways off in the wilderness, is quoting that very same passage of Scripture that deals with the word of God, our dependency on God and on his word. And truly, it is on God's word that we are dependent. And I hope that with that perspective, perhaps the wilderness does not need to be such a, a place of fear for us. And again, I'm using that in the metaphorical sense too, those difficult times in life. It may just be that those are the places, the wilderness where we are best going to hear the word of God. And so I encourage you, as you turn through your Bible, as you're studying and spending time listening to God through his word, through the Bible, as you come across that word wilderness, pay attention. Pay attention to the people who are there in the wilderness. To look closely to see what words does God speak to those people. How does that transform those people's lives? What, what takes place within that context of the wilderness and God's word? And may that continue to be a challenge for yourself with the perspective of Midbar, wilderness, place of the word. I'd like to pray with, with you about this. Lord, I do hope that this can be a perspective changer for us today, that we would see that even the wilderness, even the word by which it is named, Lord, speaks to your purpose within it, that you bring your word to us and that we are especially able to hear it in those barren places, maybe in those more difficult times. And so I ask, Lord, that we would have a change of perspective. Lord, I pray that for anybody who is in a, a wilderness season in their life, that, Lord, they would be able to, to see that your word is being proclaimed, that they would be able to hear your word in that time. And, Lord, I pray that we would take your word and what you speak to us in those wilderness times, and that, Lord, even when we're not in the wilderness per se, that we would continue to glean from your word, Lord. I pray that as we open your word and we read it and we see the way that you've impacted others in the wilderness, Lord, that it would give us a great enthusiasm and joy for your word, whether it's in the wilderness that we hear it or other. And I ask this in your name, Jesus, for your glory and for your honor. Amen. Well, next Thursday, January 28th, we're going to come back and have the next open word study. And that one's going to follow this one in theme. I'm going to actually give you the word we're going to study. It is to hear. Shema is the Hebrew word. And it has a very interesting twist to that word to hear. And I believe it's going to be important for us as we continue to contemplate this idea of wilderness, place of the word, and our need to truly hear what it is that God is speaking. Well, until next Thursday, Shalom in Christ.